Hey gang, my name is James White and welcome to the Signal Noise Broadcast. Also my birthday. Welcome to my birthday. <laughs> That's right, today's my 43rd birthday, February 24th, 2020. A great reason to do something a little bit different on the YouTube channel. Every year I tend to make a graphic to post on Twitter or Instagram, using my birthday as an excuse to make something, really. But this year, I recorded the entire process, going through Illustrator and Photoshop, to make a little graphic that involves a lot of Chrome. So without further ado, let's jump into Illustrator and get to it. Okay gang, here we are in Adobe Illustrator with some flat pre-made letter forms. This isn't a font, these are shapes I put together. And we're going to make a Chrome 43 in honor of my 43rd birthday. So you're going to see me early on here messing around with my gradients. I have a, an asset next to the canvas you'll see there, and that's sort of my Chrome equation where I can sample all the gradients to make sure they're consistent with one another. I'm going to start building some beveled edges right here, and this is just a pen tool with the smart guides turned on so everything snaps into place. I call this ditch digging. You know, it's a very monotonous process that you just have to go through in order to make everything look consistent. I don't use filters or pre-made assets or any of that stuff. I build all my Chrome stuff by hand to make sure I have complete control over all of the elements. And there's two levels of gradients going on on these edges, so you'll see a light version of the gradient in the upper left, because that's where I see the light source kind of hitting these, then a darker version in the lower right to give the illusion of a shadow, because all of these are flat vector shapes, but we're trying to give the illusion that it's a three-dimensional object with an actual reflective surface. And you'll see me with these curves on the edge of the three. I can't do that with the pen tool, so I have to make a shape over top of that edge and then use the Pathfinder tool to knock everything else out, and then mess with two levels of gradient on that to give the illusion that it's a curved surface. Here you'll see we're building a drop on that those letter forms. Now I used to use the 3D extrusion tool in Illustrator, but that thing is more hassle than it's worth. I end up going in and cleaning up so many of the unnecessary shapes that are in behind everything. And But I gave up using that ages ago, and I just build everything by hand now. I'm just holding down the shift to make sure everything is at a 45 degree angle. And uh, I think it's called isometric view, so this isn't a real three-dimensional object, but it's just giving the illusion, basically for the merit of design. I just want it to look cool, and the 45 degree angle just always looks cool. So I'm going in and adding two levels of gradients to that drop, so you'll see a pink to orange version and a blue to purple. And I'm not being too precious about where they land. There's no equation, I just want it to look cool. And adding some bits into the background to just to give it a little bit more... Um, more of a design feel, more flesh out the design a little bit. So here I'm adding a little bit of curvature to the top of that reflection, because I didn't want the reflection to just be a straight line, because I find that pretty boring. Adding a little bit of curves allows it to look a little bit more natural. <laughs> this part, you'll see an error message being thrown up a lot right here when I'm trying to get there it is there. My Pathfinder kept giving me issues, like I wasn't selecting the right things. When you have a lot of vectors on top of one another in Illustrator, it can get pretty hairy with trying to select the right two ones, copy and paste in place, selecting them both, and then trying to, to knock them out with the Pathfinder tool. So that's why you're seeing that error message come up all the time. If I were recording my voice during the making of this, I was just cursing a lot, because <laughs> it just wasn't working for me. But the number three, it worked perfectly first time. So you'll see me go back over to the number four, chop out what I had before, and then we're gonna go back and, uh, and redo all of those, those curves because I figured out how it worked, essentially. So there they go, going over to the edge, and then I'm combining those two and then knocking out using the Pathfinder, and everything is good now. So, And here I'm going back and smoothing out a lot of those curves because the, the first rough version of it normally has too many points and there's too much action going on and it interferes with the readability of the actual letters. So I go in and smooth stuff out because I want this to ultimately look like a smooth piece and nothing is too distracting. So you'll see me going in and messing with those, those handlebars and making sure those curves are, are all good and consistent and, and readable. And messing with the gradients too, that's one thing. Everything is always in flux with me. I'm always messing with my gradients at every, every single stage. You'll see that in the Photoshop stage as well. Gotta get those tones right. So 
So here we're going to move over to Photoshop, and I had three levels, and you'll see them over in the, the layers palette there. I have Chrome, Reflection, and Line. What I'm going to do is start adding layers on top of those layers. So you'll see, like, I'm messing with some noise, I'm putting some gradients on there, I'm adjusting the shading, adding a little bit of blue tint, adjusting levels and things, and airbrushing in some little edges you'll see at the bottom there. And again, that's just to add a little bit more of a natural element to the form so it doesn't look like just straight vector elements. And I have that lens flare asset, and I built that seven years ago or something, and I have it in my CC library or global library, whatever the hell it's called, and every time I do a piece that requires a lens flare, it's the exact same one. So if you look through any of my work over the past seven years or so, you'll see that same lens flare. And I added the little channel title because I, I see myself as, you know, today is my 43rd birthday, so I'm switching over to channel 43. And I want this to look also like a network ID, like actually something that would be on television back in the 80s. So here, I was flipping through my assets, and I pulled a cloud photo from my library, and I normally do that to overlay on top of the chrome shapes, just to add a little bit more variation to the tones, and just to make it look a little bit more natural, like it's not vector shapes, which it is. All of this is just flat forms that are treated a certain way to give it the illusion that it's a three-dimensional and reflective object in a cartoony way. And I add star field and a moon and that sort of thing, just to add a little bit more of a cosmic feel. And again, you'll see me messing with these tones the entire way. I put a flood on the top, it's just, I call it gross purple for all you noisers out there. Overlaying purple over top of anything, I think I have it set to screen at about 15% or 20%, and it adds a consistent tonality to all the colors. So it adds a little bit of purple to everything. And you'll see me messing with that drop again, I'm just doing that to try to make sure what looks best in the overall form. Adjusting those overall levels, that's the last stage I normally do, just to make sure everything, everything is bright in the way that I want it. Until eventually we arrive at this final, Channel 43 Chrome. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the digital side of signal noise this time. That video was a lot of fun to put together, so I'm definitely going to be doing more of those in the future. Thank you very much for dropping by, gang. If you're looking to show some support for the channel, just subscribe, tell a friend. You can drop by the Signal Noise store. I have copies of my off-the-grid zine available if you're looking to own some of my work in printed format. So thank you very much for dropping by. My name is James White, and this is the Signal Noise broadcast. Birthday edition. Stay rad. <laughs>